All right. This is the second time that I'm doing this because I recorded 40 minutes of footage and it was doubled. Because I got a camera. Well, it's built into my thing, laptop, which you could probably hear. It sounds like a jet. It sounds like I have an Intel computer again. And that is because of... Oh, OBS. I'm using that to be able to do all this. Anyways, hopefully um, it's not doubled this time. Let me make sure. Fuck. Uh, all right, we're not doubled. I just checked. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I am doing a video on how I mix bass, how I mixed it for this album that is not out as of this video, but the single is out. I've done a video on it already. The song is Like Me by an artist, DCB. There you go. I said the artist. There was somebody that kept saying, kept asking me who the artist was, and I had said it in the video, and I told them that it's in the description. Um, so the song is Like Me by DCB. Um, so don't ask me. I will link it once again in the description. But yeah, this song has really good bass. It was recorded well. I don't think I recorded it, but I was in the room. But, you know, bass sounds good. I tried some new techniques in the middle of mixing this album. Some stuff that I picked up from some people. A couple things I got from Alex Tume. Yeah, I, I just thought I'd try to take those things and what I was listening about songs where I thought the bass sounded really good to me and super big, super fat, and tried to apply that to my template. And I think I've come up with something. I'm not saying that it's like the holy grail of bass mixing, but I will say it's, for me personally, it was definitely a huge improvement on the way I mixed bass. You know, it's in my template now. I'm applying it to all my bass. You know, it sounds really good. It was a real breakthrough moment for me. And I'm really proud of the low end on this because, you know, as, as everybody knows, low end is tough. Here is the song. I'm going to play the song. I'm going to play it coming out of the verse into the pre-chorus and then back in on the chorus just so you can get a feel of, of what the song sounds like. So this is the final mix of the song. This is what you'll hear on all streaming and all that shit. So here we go. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had to bet on myself. Just me. Still alive and I'm all alone and it's complicated. Butterflies in my stomach Ill advised but I'm on the go No time is wasted Just trying to make it Just trying to make it It's all or nothing It's all or nothing It's all or nothing it's all The bass is very aggressive Very thick in my opinion, and fat. I mean, it's not like super subby. It's not like an 808 or anything, but the bass is there, especially if you listen on good headphones, good car speakers, good speakers in the studio if you have a sub. Um, it's definitely, in my opinion, like it's there for sure. It sounds huge, especially with like, you know, when you turn it up, you know, it sounds really good. So let's start with the first thing. Let's Let's play without the processing and we'll take all this stuff off. So here is, I'm going to play this, the out of the, you know, verse into the pre-chorus whole song again, no processing. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had to bet on myself. Just me. So yeah, I mean, you can hear the bass, but you can't feel the bass. You can't, if you're wearing headphones, it doesn't like vibrate your ears, you know, or in the studio or in the car, wherever you're at right now, um, it's probably not rumbling as much as it should, or it's just not as present in the song as it should, but you can still hear it. So that means that A, the balance is good, or it's at least decent enough where you know that there's bass in the song. So that's, that's step one, right? It's just getting the balance, making sure that you can hear the bass, but now the key is to make sure that we can feel the bass, right? So I'm gonna throw in, before I explain and break down every single individual plugin and all this stuff, I'm just gonna throw in this bus, which is my bass crush, which is new to me. I, di I didn't 
I didn't do a lot of parallel stuff. I do have that stuff in my template. I just don't reach for it as often, and especially with bass. This is like new to me. I never thought about doing it for whatever reason, but now I am. So I'm gonna flip it on halfway through. And then just with the bass crush, you'll hear the difference that it's making. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself. And I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had to bet on myself. So yeah, I mean, you know, not that much of a difference, but enough where you can kind of hear it come out just a little bit more. And then now I'm going to play what I just played with the bass crush and everything in, but with the first stage of processing on the individual track itself. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself, and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had to bet on myself. So yeah, I mean, you can hear it's almost there. It's it's starting to creep up a little bit. So next, I'm gonna play um what I did on the overall bus, basically, where everything is summing down to this single bus, meaning. At least all these bass elements. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself, and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had to bet on myself. Just me. So you can really hear that the mid range gets pushed a little bit more. There's a little bit more bottom end, like sub, and yeah. So now I'm gonna break down everything individually. So. Let's go ahead and mute this shit, and then we'll solo everything. So here is the bass soloed, no processing, just as it was recorded. So, Sounds good. Um, it is a sub 37 Moog. So yeah, sub 37, um, super good synth, obviously known for its bass, hence the name. I don't think I was there when, I, when it was recorded, but I was definitely there to make sure, hopefully, it, at least that it wasn't recorded terrible. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it sounds really good. It already sounds like super fat. You can definitely tell there's a lot of mid-range information there, but it's not like, it's still not like, fat enough in my opinion which is you know the job as the mixer is to take what the producer or the artist has given me or given you and just enhance that not change it you know but just enhance it so the first thing i did it looks like is threw an la3 on it yeah i mean everybody knows this plugin this compressor i mean is uh good on bass good on you know i've used it on uh i think i've used it on drums for sure and vocals, it's more popular on bass for sure. The whole goal with my first stage of compression with bass is I'm more of trying to, I'm not trying to like squeeze it, squeeze the life out of it, but I'm just trying to make sure that it doesn't sound wild, it doesn't sound crazy, that from that point on, anything I throw this compressed bass through is that making sure that all the plugins will receive an even, hopefully an even amount of frequency and signal, if that makes sense. I don't want it jumping into another compressor or EQ, especially when it comes to saturation and distortion. I think it, you know, those things sound its best when it's receiving an even amount or the same amount of frequency and energy. So really that's like the whole goal is to just kind of get this whole thing started, meaning like getting this very tame signal started so that when I start adding other stuff to it, hopefully it's a lot easier for those plugins to do their thing and get a little bit closer to what I want the plugins to do. Um, usually I EQ before I compress too. I just want to mention that for some reason I decided to do the LA 3A first. And like I said, pretty much the reason I like to EQ before I compress is basically what I just said. I just want to make sure that the compressor is not receiving anything that I hate about that signal. If that makes sense. So I'm just, you know, obviously, in, my, in this case, I'm, I would be EQing what I don't like about the stuff, you know, making sure that the compressor doesn't ever see any of that, if that makes sense. That's just the way I like to think about it. But it looks like in this case, I'm jumping ahead, but it looks like in this case, I added 
and instead of cutting because like i said this base already sounded really good it was super fat had plenty of tone already it's a sub 37 so here's what the compressor in So yeah, it's more of a control thing, really. I mean, it's not like adding that much tone, in my opinion, from, you know, listening back now. It's definitely just more of a level thing. If you're listening on good speakers and uh, good headphones, you can hear that the sub of this bass is just being tamed just a little bit more nicer than without it, if that makes sense. Overall, though, this is just like the controlling part, you know, just making sure that the bass is super controlled. The next part is the EQ, which I had just showed a second ago, but it looks like I'm just boosting the mid-range. You know, when it comes to mixing, mid-range is super important, making sure that you're controlling that little by little as you go. It looks like, and you know, this could have been added after the fact, because I don't know if I would have done this just listening to it or mixing the stuff on its own. This is probably something I did after the fact. And also, I definitely probably was doing this kind of thing within the song itself like maybe the mix was almost done but i just wanted the bass to pop out a little bit more so instead of reaching for volume or the fader i just did it with frequency and in this case i usually try to boost the frequency that i want to hear in the song so i did about 1k basically probably just to let the top end of the notes just kind of stand out a little bit more. So when you're listening to like small speakers and stuff, you can really hear like, oh, there is some sort of bass element there. Hopefully hopefully that makes sense. And then it looks like a probably about 70-ish. Yeah, so about 70 hertz I am boosting as well. Basically a dB and a half. And then cutting out at 20, it looks like. Uh, especially this EQ, I will say that it is very heavy handed. So just, in, but just in general, like make sure you don't cut out too much because if you have really good speakers and or really good headphones, you can definitely hear the information below 20 Hertz disappear, especially with this EQ. It's really nice. This is the Kirchhoff EQ plugin Alliance now owns or is partnered with them. So you can get it from them, but looks like it's the fab filter. Basically, in my opinion, this is like way nicer and way better. But anyways, little, little couple boost of frequencies there and a little bit of low end removal, basically. So here's with the processing and then I'll bypass both halfway through. Like I said, if you're not listening on good stuff, it might seem subtle, but it's just more of like just these little things that I'm doing to like enhance what's there, but just subtly, but enough where it's going to make a difference. It's more about just um, carving out a specific tone for the song. I said this earlier, just not doing a lot where you don't hurt what uh, the artist and producer have, you know, put together, especially with hip hop. You know, you want to make sure that it's hitting, but you also want to make sure that you're giving yourself room for other elements in the song. Then now I'm going to throw in this uh, bass crush, this bass parallel thing, and then I'll play it and then I'll break down every individual element or every individual plugin. So yeah, I mean, huge difference you can hear with that. It, it, you know, it sounded fine. It sounded good. But then once you get rid of the parallel thing, it actually feels like something's missing. You're like, oh, I actually missed that. It goes from like this focused bass to this wide, huge thing. Cause it's, you know, it's more of like an illusion thing. It's not really, you're not really trying to, in my opinion, when it comes to mixing, you're actually really trying to do what you want to do. You're just trying to make an illusion. Right. And I think that's like the whole thing about like not trying to actually change what's there. It's more about just enhancing or in this case, putting an element in a different space or in a much nicer space. But yeah, I mean, you can definitely hear the difference um, when this is gone. It just goes from like this little mono bass thing that, like I said before, I took it off. It sounded like it was good until you remove something 
that was nice about it and you're like oh shit it actually doesn't sound as cool or as big or whatever as it should you know all three of these things are getting summed to this final bus thing but anyways on the individual parallel bus thing that i'm doing that i've created i'm really just eqing everything below looks like 122 because the goal of this parallel bus is to only affect the higher frequency range of the bass that i'm sending to it because it's more this is more about tricking the ears into thinking that it sounds bigger than it is so i'll play everything in a second and then the next thing is the PSP saturator, which is probably one of my favorite little distortion plugins or whatever. It's super easy to use. Um, it sounds really good. You can get things done really quickly with it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just sounds really cool. If you don't have it, you should get it. It goes on sale a couple times a year, but I use this on everything. I'm using it on a project right now, like all over the vocals for a distortion thing. The saturation sounds good. The distortion sounds good. It gives you everything you need and more. Like I said, for this thing, and this is more about just the saturation part that I'm doing for this crush situation. And like I said, I'll play it, you know, bypass it so you can really hear what it's doing. But yeah, PSP saturator, get it. And then this last thing is this micro shift, which is another thing. If you don't have it, what are you doing? Go get it. At least get the mini. I used the mini for years. I just got this big one, like, two years ago um, but even the mini will do the job 100 percent on the mix focus about 1500 it looks like i'm using the third style i think this is based off of the h3000 i've always liked this third one even on the mini i'm sure it's the same algorithm but i just think the third one the third option sounds the best to me detune is at 50 right yeah and then delay is at 50 which is the tightest no specific reason i was probably just messing around with it when I was creating it and just thought this sounded the best. So here is with out it again, and then I'll throw it in just so you can get a reference, you know, a refresher on what it sounded like. And then I'm gonna play it just with the EQ. So you can really hear that the saturation, a little bit more top end, but definitely more mid range. And the micro shift is just adding obviously some stereo. What this EQ is doing before is just making sure that from 122.98, just only being sent to those plugins. It's just filtering everything off. Just set, it's just sending a filtered signal to the PSP saturator and the micro shift, because like I said, I only want to affect the top end. And that's the whole goal with this, because if I send anything below that, it could potentially sound really muddy, not really just trying to change the entire tone of a signal with this whole processing thing I'm doing. At least that's the way I think about it. But you can hear that it's a huge difference. All three of these are being bussed to this final bus thing, which is a folder as well. The first thing I'm doing, LA-2A, Y'all know how much I like this plugin. Specifically, this is the gray one, uh, which I like the best on bass. I think it's, to me, it's a little bit more darker and a little bit more grittier than the silver. The silver is like a little shiny to me. I just like to switch it up anyways, try to add some variety to stuff. So yeah, I'll play it with out it and then I'll throw it in. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had to better myself. Just me. So I meant to play it in solo, but whatever, you can still hear that obviously there is a little bit more glue being added to the bass. But the main thing too is that I'm also using it for gain, it sounds like, which I'm not a level matcher, gain matcher person. I just think that kind of stuff is goofy and ir irrelevant when you're mixing. Uh, I think that's the last thing you should worry about. When you're in the flow, just, just mix, man. Definitely a little bit more gain, but you know, just another layer of making sure that everything is tamed and the process signal, because now, now at this point, we are adding a little bit more mid-range and, and high 
and information to this base that needs to be tamed again um, just a little bit more so like i said that's the way i think about it and then this next one is a knockoff of a uh uh culture vulture by whoever thermal something or some shit i don't know um, but you know, the UAD one's always too expensive and this one just happened to be in the arteria bundle that I bought and I came across it and I was like, oh shit, let me try it. So I did. And it sounds just the same or just as good as the UAD one, in my opinion. And I think it has a little bit more functionality too. With this, I am just trying to get a little bit more mid range and yet again, a little bit more high end. It's just these little subtle moves on these plugins that will just make it stand out of the mix a little bit more and most importantly try to get it to translate on earbuds laptop speakers your iphone whatever just these little things of saturation and distortion is super important in my opinion for music these days to be able to translate well all right anyways um, where was I at? Oh yeah. So this plugin, like I said, the, you know, the goal is to, sorry, my phone's going off. The goal is to, um, just get a little bit more distortion, a little bit more mid range, just so these, you know, bass elements will translate onto smaller speakers. I'll play it without it and then throw it in. Staring at myself, set a statement for myself and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had a bet on myself. Just me. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself, and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no. So yeah, I mean, you can hear it's popping out just a little bit more. Sometimes it can be a little too much. You know, you just gotta find the sweet spot. But this plugin will add a lot of low end information, so it's a good way of also getting low end. I just you know, just heard it when I was like, oh shit, yeah, that sub really comes out. I will mention, I do like the T setting, which is the triode and the pentode two. Um, for whatever reason, these two right here stand out the most to me. I'm not sure what's really going on behind the sauce, but those two do things that I like, you know, if you have this plugin, try it out. The last one is the little radiator, another plugin. If you don't have it, the hell are you doing? Get it. Another one that goes on sale. Like this thing was just on sale, I think. I don't even own the big one. I just, I like the smaller one because, you know, if you're not familiar with Sound Toys, they have a bigger version of their plugin and a smaller version. Most of their plugins, not all of them. Custom preset for sure. I know for a fact. 5% in a 50. 50, obviously, 50% 50 mix and then 50% on their heat knob thing, whatever. And then the 5% is the heat cranked all the way up and the mix at 5%. Really the goal with this, I've mentioned it before, this thing is really good at enhancing the mid range in a really nice way. And that is something that I like to do to bass if it makes sense for the song, obviously. I will throw this on and this is like the final thing that usually will get me um, to where I need the bass to be. Here, I'll play without it and then throw it in. Staring at myself, set a standard for myself, and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had a bet on myself. Just me. So yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, hopefully you can hear that. It's just a little bit more mid-range that com comes out. You know, these things are just like, uh, it's just little moves that add up to this final big thing, you know, but they're important. So this is pretty much what I do for bass. I mean, hopefully it makes sense as of now. I mean, this is definitely a way better process than what I was doing before. I really wasn't, I was almost not doing enough, I think in the past and overthinking and thinking if I did too much, then I don't know, then I was doing too much, but I feel like this is like a middle ground, you know, like these things to me make sense because they're all every individual piece actually has a reason that it's there and that I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. We're almost at a 500 subs. Hopefully I can get there by the end of the year. I got like two months or whatever. I don't know. Um, and then the next goal is to hopefully get to a thousand and then see where we go from there. But yeah, that's pretty much it.